Hello everybody, this is Swati Gupta, Chartered Accountant. Welcome to lecture number 3 of our India's course that is fully being recorded in English language. Okay. In the last class, we ended our class on recognition and de-recognition. I will quickly revise and then we'll head towards our lecture number 3's uh, beginning. Okay. What is it? Recognition and de-recognition. These are two important concepts that you might have heard it before as well. I clear it a better way, in a better way. Okay. Recognition means recording any uh, figure of asset or liability, income or expense in your books of accounts. Whereas de-recognition means removing them from your books of accounts. Okay. For example, if we talk about asset, you know whenever asset is re being recorded or increased, then you need to debit it. Okay. Whereas if you want to reverse it, sell it or scrap out. Okay. In case if you want to remove it, you reverse that transaction. And this is known as de-recognition. Okay. Similarly goes with liability, income and expenses. Okay. So are you clear with this? It can be that even two or three things are affected uh, simultaneously. Okay. For example, if you talk about uh, sale of goods, what is it happening? If it is cash sale, cash is coming in, whereas the inventory is going out. Okay. One asset is there, whereas one is coming in and other is going out. This is known as matching of cost with income. Okay. Now, we, if we talk about carrying amount, any amount that is being recorded of the asset or liability in the balance sheet, in the books of account, such value at which it is recorded is known as carrying amount. Okay. Now, let's head towards further concepts. So, whenever you are reading, either you are student or professional, this video is for you. Watch it till end. In this, we will discuss many, many concepts of framework, the, the basics and a little higher version which will help you in solving all your practical as well as your exam questions. Okay. Now, if you are a student or a professional, no matter, I request you that, please, 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 sit with an open mind and calm mind whenever you are studying. This will really help you in relating the concept and understanding the concept in a very easier manner. Okay, so promise me whenever you will study and especially through my videos and my material, what you will be doing, you will sit with a calm mind and in an accepting and receiving mode so that anything that is being delivered to you, you are able to observe it, absorb it better. Okay, is it a promise? Will you keep it? I hope you will. Okay, let's begin our lecture number three from here onwards and discuss our other topics. Okay, let's head towards other slide. Here, as you know, we uh, discussed that even if there is low probability, the probability is low of the future inflow, potential inflow, then also it is considered as an asset and recorded as an asset. If the probability is too low of the outflow, still it is recorded as an obligation and liability. Are you aware of this? Can you recollect it from the previous lectures? Okay. Now, what happens whenever there is low probability, see, whenever there is low probability of such inflow or outflow, we record it in the books of account. But you need to mention some relevant information about that particular asset or liability, uh, okay, about that uh, particular asset or liability which has low probability. What are those? Firstly, magnitude. Magnitude simply means the amount of extent or the size that will vary. For example, if we talk about inflow, will it be 10,000 or 10,000 crore? See, the size, the extent is so much different. Okay, So this magnitude is known as, uh, this magnitude is one of the important information that you need to uh, lay down, Okay, that you need to present. The magnitude of the possible inflow and outflow. That means, for example, the range, Okay, the wide range. The higher the range is, the higher possibility, uh, the higher the magnitude is. Okay, got it? Next comes possible timing. When will be the inflow? Year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4. When? When? For example, if you talk about cash flows, we are always forecast for 5 years, 7 years, 10 years. Okay, the probable inflow, the probable outflow. So, you have to talk about the possible timing and the factors affecting the probability of their occurrence. The factors then you'll come to know whether it is sensitive or not. For example, if a particular outcome or you can say inflow or outflow is sensitive because of some information, what does over here sensitive means? That it will be influenced vastly because of certain event. Okay. Uh, 
now this whenever you are recording it you know you have to take relevance into consideration and faithful representation okay relevance means if it is material or not and faithful representation means that uh, you are depicting it in a fair way okay the nature the main description classification measurement is done in a particularly proper way okay also it should be neutral complete and free from errors now what happens is for example for an asset or liability to be recognized such major must be estimated and are therefore subject to measurement uncertainty for example they are estimated they are estimated that means any approximation is made why because the measurement is uncertain we cannot make an exact we cannot quote whenever we cannot quote an exact figure what you have to do you have to make estimation since estimation is there there is high probability that it will differ okay firstly second uh, the level of measurement of uncertainty may be so high that if following circumstances exist this is a question in your ici exam if you are a professional and you're not aiming for any sort of exam please still read this because these will help you in determining the practical uh, side of the same uh, nature of transaction okay how come a particular transaction will be held that its measurement is uncertain it's vastly uncertain when when firstly a range of the possible outcomes is exceptionally wide it can differ from 1 to 10 crores okay the range is too wide it is highly uh, it every outcome has high probability every out sorry sorry every outcome each and every outcome has low probability for example there are only two outcomes for example heads or tails there is high probability 50 50 chances okay if there are number of outcomes are too high then the each outcome probability is very low okay so when when there is measurement uncertainty when there is probable probability is low when when the possible outcomes are exceptionally wide okay secondly the measure is exceptionally sensitive why sensitive because it is dependent and it is vastly influenced by even every small change okay even every small change any new information even a simple small information can impact it vastly then such information such measurement is known as sensitive if it is sensitive then it is highly what it has high magnitude high variances thirdly measuring the asset or liability requires exceptionally difficult or exceptionally subjective allocations of the cash flow that do not relate solely to the asset or liability being measured if such allocation of cash flow is not particularly directly related and you cannot quote a perfect uh, exact figure then what you have to do you have to make estimates simply it was told over here for faithful representation if such information is there which has low probability you have to record it but you have to make estimates you have to make such estimates okay so low probability is recorded plus estimates are taken plus estimates are taken okay your magnitude meaning is also said that the size or extent to which it may differ next till now any doubt please let me know there are live chats going on you can ask me in that i'll take it one by one otherwise uh, there is if you are seeing the recorded lectures no no worries there also a chat box is given you can ask me over there okay next other factors for recognition recognition means recording in the books of accounts when any particular asset or liability will be recorded in the books of accounts other factors for example faithful representation of a recognized asset liability equity income expense involves not only the recognition of the item not only the recognition of the item but also the measurement i said the faithful representation always considers two points that is measurement measurement and classification okay and classification that means while recording you have to see that you have to check that whether a particular asset or liability can be identified and can be classified properly okay exactly can be classified and secondly the amount can be estimated or can be quoted if you can quote the amount and can you can quote the class identify the class then you are doing faithful representation okay all the criteria of faithful representation are met so it is talking about that 
not only the recognition the relevance need to be considered but also the measurement and the presentation is class it is necessary to con consider not merely its description and measurement in the balance sheet but also the depiction of income result resulting income expenses and changes in the equity okay you know that you have to present your cash flow statement change in equity statement okay whether related asset and liabilities are recognized a complete depiction includes all information necessary okay a complete you know that for faithful representation you need to present complete information it should be neutral that is not biased and free from error so it is talking about if you talk about complete all the necessary information must be stated in the financial statement so what are we talking about we are talking about two important points that are relevance and faithful uh, representation so for recognition of any particular asset or liability you need to what do relevance and faithful representation check if both of these uh, criteria and qualitative characteristics are met then only you will be recognizing particular asset or liability in the books of account if it cannot be uh, quoted with exact amount what you can do you can make estimates what are three reasons when you have to make estimates uh, when there is measurement uncertainty when there are exceptionally wide range of outcomes when the, uh, the outcome is sensitive and the third when the allocation of cash flow is not as per particularly directly related to the particular asset or liability measure okay next comes de recognition means means removing such particular asset or liability from the books of accounts okay that means you will be reversing it the accounting requirements for de recognition when it needs to be done de recognition of any asset or liability that have expired or have been consumed collected fulfilled or transferred referred to as transferred component when it is being sold out transferred for example a block was there and it had four machines four buildings whatever a block was there and you have transferred one machine then this transferred component is known as then such amount that you are transferring is known as transferred component and such amount will be reversed to the extent it is being transferred whereas continue to recognize whereas there is a portion that you are continuing in the balance sheet is known as retained portion okay the removed portion is known as transferred component whereas the amount that you are continuing to recognize and keep in the balance sheet then this is known as retained component no income or expenses are recognized on the retained component as a result of the de recognition of the transferred component unless the de recognition results in the change in the measurement requirements applicable to the retained component no uh, amount will be recorded unless it is impacting in the pnl unless it is impacting in the pnl it will not be recorded as any sort of income or expense okay if it is affecting profit or loss gain then only it will be recorded in the pnl okay now element of financial statement it will be asset liability income expense so asset when the entity loses control of all or part of all or part of the recognized asset okay then you have to derecognize it liability when there is no longer has a present obligation for all or part of it when you will be reversing it either you have paid it or they have waived off either partly or fully either it is paid off fully settled fully will you continue to recognize in the balance sheet no you will remove it after the process of removing it from the balance sheet is known as de recognition simple recognition means including in the balance sheet de recognition means removing from the balance sheet okay whether it is asset or liability next i hope this is clear very much okay in case of any doubt please let me know okay please reach out to us don't keep your doubts as your doubts okay raise your doubts ask your doubts and get it cleared as in then don't wait for any particular time that okay uh, we'll take it afterwards what's the hurry no please they uh, get it as in when the lectures are going on it will help you because each and every points are connected further okay and i am i follow a pattern where i try to connect each and every portion okay so this makes understanding better clear simplified okay next measurement basis factor uh, monitoring uh, monetary information about asset liability and related income and expenses it can be either historical cost or current value historical cost is the cost at which it was first time recorded okay first time acquired purchased or recorded is the historical cost 
is the historical cost it does not include any sort of fair value okay it is entity specific entity specific okay it does not reflect it does not reflect not reflected except the change extent except to the extent that those changes relate to impairment if there is any impairment impairment means what that the carrying amount the amount that is being recorded in the balance sheet is low and uh, is high and the market value is too low when you go to sell that okay the amount that you will receive is too low so this is like when your assets are recorded higher than expected then this is impairment loss the difference is treated as impairment loss so the historical cost is always unaffected, unaffected is never ever changed unless and until there is any sort of impairment loss there is separate indian accounting standard for impairment loss you'll read and understand better over there okay here it's just an overview that whenever you are recording any asset liability income expense it can be done either in historical cost either at historical cost or current value okay next using information updated to reflect conditions at the measurement date current value is what it always reflect the current position the current value that is being uh, taken or that it carries okay it always keeps on changing whenever there is assessment it might or might not change whereas for historical cost no further assessment is done okay unless and until there is exceptional case is there that is uh, that is impairment loss okay now it reflects changes since the previous measurement date okay at every measurement date it will keep changing in estimates of cash flows and other factors reflected in those current values and current uh, in those current values to report substance of the group uh, contracts it can use historical cost or current value the group can use either historical cost or cost value unless the standard specifically prescribes that you have to follow this otherwise two options are given as per the framework now comes current value what is current value current value can be exit value or the entry value current value can be exit value or entry value entry value is the amount at which it is being recorded for the first time therefore it is current cost for example you purchased a particular machine or building or etc and you have recorded it for example 10 lakh 10 uh, thousand okay so this is current cost entry value whereas exit is where where you will be removing such asset so this is either fair value or value in use or fulfillment value in use is tagged for the asset whereas fulfillment value is recorded for the liability these are just term, terms different terms we'll read about them one by one fair value value in use fair value value in use these both are what exit value okay if we talk about liability it can be either fair value or fulfillment value if we talk about asset it can be either fair value or value in use what are these simply fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction what does orderly transaction means that it is not influenced by any external forces between market participants at a measurement date you have read this okay fair value other than this there is separate standard in s113 where same definition is given it is 113 definition in as 113 definition okay when you read that particular index you will get this better okay for time being it is like orderly transaction orderly transaction over here means that no influence is there between market participants means those are willing to sell buy at market rate and all and what does measurement date means at the time at the date on which it is being measured and recorded okay now value and use means what means the present value of the cash flow or other economic benefits what does present value means present value means uh, for example you have uh, your parents uh, when you they were in school they used to get a pocket money of 1 rupee 2 rupee okay now you are getting 100 rupees 1000 rupees why because the purchasing power of the money has declined okay now what you can what you could have purchased what your parents could have purchased from that 2 rupees you cannot purchase it today okay for example further if we go in further years ahead okay uh, what comes of rupees 100 right now after 5 years it won't be of 100 rupees okay it will be of 150 rupees so in order to afford the same thing you have to have 150 rupees for example okay so this is what at that point of time if you will be receiving something or you need to pay something for example 150 rupees 
what is the current value of it? It is 100 rupees. Okay. So such 100 rupees, how you have calculated by present value method. Okay. And what you do? You calculate the present value of those cash flow or the other economic benefits that you will be getting in the form of money. And then you present value it with a factor that is being applicable. Okay. You will come to know how it is calculated, why it is calculated. But value in use, whenever uh, the word arises, value in use, what you have to keep in mind is that present value of cash flow. Present value of cash flow. Whenever a term comes, value in use. Because this will be repeated again and again. When we talk about instruments, financial instruments and other index, the value in use concept comes. Okay. This means present value of cash flow. And fair value means according to index 113. Now, fair value is always calculated and this reflects the perspective of market participants as the definition itself says. Participants in the market to which the entity has access. Whereas, value and use is entity specific. Is entity specific. Okay. Entity on its own calculates its further cash inflow and outflow, its forecast and predicts and then calculates its present value. It is quite entity specific. Okay. Fair value is market participants oriented, whereas value in use is entity specific. It is very much particular to a specific entity. Okay. That an entity expects to derive from the use of an asset or ultimate disposal, either use or ultimate after selling it. What is fulfillment value? If you talk about asset, you use a term value in use. If you talk about liability, you talk about fulfillment value. What is the term over here used is fulfillment value for the liability. Present value of the cash or other economic benefits that an entity expects to be obliged to transfer as it is liability. For liability, fulfillment value. For asset, value in use. Are you clear? If you are clear, please in the chat box write uh, clear. Then we will move ahead. If you are seeing the recorded lectures, please may, let me know in the comment section that uh, what are the doubts or is it clear or not. Okay. Also, you can download the app from the description box. The same course is available in Hindi and English, both the languages. So, please identify the course uh, very carefully and then only enroll for the same. Okay. Even you can attend my live classes. Are you good? Clear, clear, clear. Let me know in the comment section. Is it clear? Okay. If it is clear, then we will move towards the question answers part also in this video. Okay. So, you have to keep a little patience and uh, ready to learn. Okay. Even if you are professional, don't think that why should I learn like a student right now. Okay. Is this the way a professional should learn? No. Every time you are learning, you have to keep a student approach. Okay. If you really want to have a deep knowledge in it, over thorough knowledge can be uh, taken only by putting in some hours and reading it like a student. Even if I talk about my case, uh, even after becoming a chartered accountant, I, I enrolled for a specific India's course, read it thoroughly. It was approximately 200 hours course, okay, 200 hours or 240 hours were there, okay. I read about it, I read it thoroughly, I solved each and every question and then uh, came an understanding that and confidence that okay, I can do it. Now I've got a good view of it. Because I personally like accounts and all. Can we move ahead? Are you clear? Everybody? Let's see. Let's see the next. If you talk about fair value and value in use again. Value in use comes for asset. Fair value, fulfillment value comes for liability. How it is determined? Directly by observing the prices in an active market or using measurement techniques. This you will understand when you are reading the index one month fee. There are different different um, techniques given. Okay, if the amount is directly observable, can be observed from the market directly, then you take that value. Okay, if it is observable and needs some adjustment because of your entity is different from other entity. Okay, then you make adjustments to it. And level three comes when you have to use valuation techniques like PV of present valuation of cash flows and all. Okay, so this is more mentioned and more clearly understood when you talk about in this one month three. Why we are talking about here? Because the framework says it, and you have questions regarding this as well. Okay, 
no value in you cannot be observed because it is entity specific they have to do present value of the cash flow so it cannot be identified from the market directly okay transaction cost considered in the measurement cost incurred on initial recognition and cost to be incurred on disposal of the asset or settlement of the liability are considered whereas if we talk about cash flow uh techniques theory of cash flow value in use and fulfillment value cost incurred on initial recognition are considered but when we talk about disposal it these are not considered and if we talk about disposal these are not uh, these are considered sorry cost on initial recognition are not considered okay because you are adjusting the cash flow with the present value factor okay so you do not consider the cost whereas if we talk about uh disposal and settlement okay there you have to uh, include and consider the transaction cost what are transaction cost for example the brokerage the transportation etc okay especially the brokerage and the commission or the taxes can be included now comes historical cost or current cost okay historical cost de value determined on date of acquisition of the asset or incurrence of the liability current cost is which cost the cost uh, realized analyzed and calculated on each measurement day components asset equals to consideration plus transaction cost okay whereas liability means consideration received minus transaction cost you have to do net net received or net paid in okay whereas current cost means uh, consideration that would be paid plus transaction cost that would be incurred whereas liability consideration that would be received minus transaction cost that will be incurred here also net is done current every on every measurement date it is recalculated historical cost where does not include that at every measurement date it does not need to uh, recalculate you keep continuing the same amount okay but you have to show net in both the cases the net received and net paid in. okay next balance sheet if we talk about carrying amount the primary value uh, see we have learned historical cost current cost fair value and value in use okay and if we talk about liability its fulfillment value we will be discussing this in carrying amount that means the amount that you will be uh, recording in the books of accounts see this is very much important from practical view as well so whenever you are dealing with any sort of balance sheet okay and now you have what a particular asset now you have to see which approach are you following if you are a following historical cost so while recording in the balance sheet the carrying amount at which it will be recorded okay will be historical cost cost to the extent unconsumed or uncollected and recoverable includes interest accrued on any financing component for example uh, if you are talking about asset okay so you have deducted the depreciation what will be your historical cost deducting the depreciation for example you are recorded any particular asset and such amount has been transferred okay and removed the amount that is still left with you still left unconsumed will be treated as historical cost will be treated as historical cost so amount what at what you have to record the carrying amount will be after deducting the after deducting any consumed amount and will be recorded at the only left amount that is unconsumed or not yet used if we talk about current cost current cost to the extent it is unconsumed or uncollected same fair value it would price that would be received to sell that asset and value in use means pv of present value of the cash flow from the asset okay so this is the amount that will be recorded in the balance sheet depends which approach are you using which method are you using okay carrying amount means the amount at which you will be recording such particular asset or liability in the books of accounts in your balance sheet transaction cost you have to include in this as you have seen you have to include your transaction cost current cost you have to include fair value it is market participant oriented and therefore Uh, without deducting the transaction cost on disposal whereas value in use after de de deducting the present value of the transaction cost on disposal okay it is considered and it is not considered over here 
नेक्स्ट इनिशियल रिकॉग्निशन वॉट इनिशियल आफ्टर इनिशियल रिकॉग्निशन प्राइमरी वैल्यू योर नथिंग इज डन नथिंग इज डन वेर इज योर डिफरेंस बिटवीन कंसिडरेशन पेड एंड फेयर वैल्यू इज रिकॉर्डेड ओके डिफरेंस बिटवीन कंसिडरेशन पेड एंड फेयर वैल्यू ऑफ द असेट एक्वायर्ड इज रिकॉर्डेड एज द डिफरेंस ओके वेर इज वैल्यू इन यूज ओवर योर इट डज नॉट हैव एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ डिफरेंस इफ इट हैज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू टॉक अबाउट India is twenty. There is a grant. Okay, so if you say that market value of grant, market rate of grant, market rate of such loan, and the government grant, if there is difference, for example, market rate is twelve percent, and the government is giving you loan at five percent, so such difference amount is grant. Now you have to do the present valuation. You have to see the carrying amount of the uh, grant and the amount that you have actually received, and the difference of the loan amount. Difference amount of the amount that you received and the difference of the carrying amount is treated as grant, the fair value of the grant. Okay, so here also same thing is coming. The consideration that you paid or the present value occurred is treated as the difference. Okay, now transaction cost on purchase, no, not applicable, not applicable, and here it is treated as expense and expense. Sale or consumption of the asset, it is treated as expense, 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 and expense. Okay. now next transaction cost when you are doing sale okay it is included it is okay because you know you do it net net receivable or net payable net receivable or net payable okay now fair value it is included and value in use it is included uh, when you are doing the disposal okay already considered in the computation of the value in use and hence not included only included at the time of disposal when you are doing pv of the cash flows cash flow is already netted out that what is the outflow and what is the inflow it is already set off with the inflow and outflow and then you are doing the present value of the net amount that you will be receiving or paying okay so therefore you do not need to any uh, deduct further any sort of transaction cost are you clear because you have already done in that value you have already figured it out and you have already included while doing the calculation of such value in use so therefore further it is not included interest income it is included it is included fair value uh, already includes because the fair value includes the, it reflects the interest amount for example if uh, uh, if you talk about any for example uh, any saving deposits okay or any other Uh, national saving uh, certificates okay so what happens now you have invested for example 1 lakh and in the in next year you will be receiving 1 lakh 10000 so the present value of it will be 1 lakh okay and the further amount if you will be taking will be 1 lakh 10000 so since 1 lakh 10000 is the value in use and it is already the fair value and is including such interest amount therefore you do not need to include it uh, uh, otherwise separately okay already included in the fair value changes could be identified separately if we talk about value in use already included in the value in use and does not have to be included separately because these are what these are already these are the values derived after taking all the factors into calculation if you have already taken all the factors into calculation the factors like interest expenses reflect the uh, this interest amount okay so do, you do not need to make extra effort to include it separately next impairment you know that historical cost you have to uh, see the expense income but these value already reflect okay the fair value is what the current date value the measurement date value so it is already the value that you will be finally receiving or you will be finally paying okay so now you do not need to make any impairment adjustments since the historical cost was the cost that you recorded at that point of time when you were initially recording it okay and you till till that date since that date you have not made any changes therefore if there is any impairment you have to make an adjustment whereas fair value is done on every date every measurement date and therefore it already reflects such impairment it already considers all such impairment losses and therefore it does not have to calculate our or include it separately okay same is the case for the value in use 
I hope this is clear. This is a practical application. If you are searching for how to apply it your, to your business, you have to see this. Whenever you are applying or calculating or recognizing any asset or liability in your books of accounts, due to any, you have to identify which measurement you are, which approach are you accepting or following, and then you have to see whether you have to include particular thing or not. Next comes is initial recognition. It can be on market terms and off market terms. On market terms simply means it's a very good concept. Okay, uh, practical concept. How come? Let's see. On market terms, this is a very famous term. Cost of an asset acquired normally equal to the fair value. If you purchase it from any other market or any other particular participants, you will be receiving uh, at this particular amount okay for example you are taking a loan and the market rate is 12 percent and you have uh, taken a loan okay received a loan uh, at that particular 12 percent okay since the rates are same since it is equal to the fair value therefore it is known as on market terms whereas off market terms means it can be either transaction price is affected due to any relationship if it's your um, father mother any other relation brother friend you will be charging some different amount might be more concession is given since it is influenced by the relationship therefore the amount is known as off market terms okay for example there is a particular thing of rupees 100 since your father or your brother came or your friend came to buy it you might be charging only 25 rupees this 75 rupees discussion uh, discount is because of what because of the relation okay so this amount is not on market terms this amount is off market terms asset is granted to the entity free by the government or any other donation that is asset is donated liability may be imposed by any le legislation due to any law penalty may arise this is entity specific okay generally it is not charged to any market but it is charged to you so these are what these are the terms the amount that you record in the books of accounts is off market is off market it is not generally prevailing in the market okay whenever such amount or such criteria are not uh, prevailing in the market and you are uh, doing any transaction other than these market terms then this is known as off market transactions okay next there are some examples let's see if a parent provides an interest free loan to its subsidiary it is an off market okay if a parent company if a holding company is providing loan to subsidiary if it is an off market transaction because there is a relation between them the loan in parents book should be initially measured at fair value and the difference between the loan given and its fair value should be appropriately accounted okay since there is a relation it is off market off market there will be difference there will be difference you have to record the difference according to NDS 109 next an entity may choose to measure an interest bearing financial asset or at fair value through other comprehensive income okay what is other comprehensive income you know income and expense statement statement has two portion p and l and oci and together and together they are termed as tci total comprehensive income okay so if any further any entity may choose to measure an interest bearing financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income. In this case, the total fair value change is separated and classified so that the profit or loss section of statement of p &L includes the interest already. Applying the amortized cost as the measurement basis and other comprehensive includes, uh, income includes all the remaining fair value changes. See what happens if you have already included something in this and you are again including an OCI, then it will be a double counting. Okay. You will read this statement uh, balance sheet and PNL formats in the next uh, index. Okay. In the index 1, we will cover that over there. Now what I want, want to say is this uh, over here is that if a particular amount is being already recorded and reflected in PNL and if you have to uh, reflect it in OCI, okay. Now, what you have to do, you have to reverse it from p and and then only show in OCI. If you show it again in OCI, then it will be a double counting of one particular amount. So, to avoid it, what you have to do, you have to reverse it from the p and and then record it in the OCI. 
okay in order to avoid the double counting please again read it that it is an interest bearing financial at fair value through oci in the case the total fair value change is separated and classified so that the pnl section of statement of pnl includes the interest income applying and the amortized cost at the measurement basis and the oci includes all the remaining fair value changes okay you will understand this better when you read index 109 and index 32 okay next concept of capital there are two important concepts there are there is practical question also but for practical understanding for the point of view see now if you are uh, simple maintenance means what for example if you have 100 rupees right now okay and you can buy a particular uh, for example uh, i say for example a particular uh, share okay of rupees 100 now in the next year since inflation rate is 7% to 8% okay the inflation rises okay and now due to inflation you are not able to purchase now the same amount same thing or same product or same service is being charged 107 rupees is being charged 107 rupees in year 1 the the price was 100 rupees and in year 2 the price is now 107 rupees okay if you are uh, for example you are buying a soap or toothpaste so if you are able to maintain your cap capital or increase your capital to 107 rupees then you have successfully maintained your capital if you are not able to increase your capital up to rupees 107 or more then you have failed to maintain your capital are you clear capital maintenance means what maintaining the capital okay increasing the capital to the amount so that in the next year also you are able to afford the same thing okay you are beating the inflation you are combating the inflation okay so in year 1 if you had 1 100 rupees and in year 2 the same thing is costing 107 if you are able to match with 107 then you have successfully maintained your capital otherwise you have not maintained your capital you have failed to maintain your capital it is two concepts are given financial and physical financial is the invested money or the purchasing power that is net, net asset or equity whereas physical talks about your operating activity your machinery is your capacity okay for example for the year 1 you had 100 units capacity and year 2 if you have increased or not if you are able to maintain the increased cost with your capacity or not okay are you clear let's read about them concept of capital maintenance financial capital maintenance profit is earned only in the financial or money amount of the net asset at the end of the period at the end of the period exceeds the financial money of the net asset at the beginning okay if it exceeds what year 2 was 107 if it is exceeding 100 rupees then only it will be termed as you are maintaining the capital after excluding any distributions if you have did a, if you have given out any dividends if you are doing if you have done any drawings then it should be removed and contributions from owners and if you have made any capital add, uh, addition okay then it should be added during the period financial capital maintenance can be measured in either nominal monetary units or units of the constant purchasing power we'll read this right now with an example what does physical means physical capital maintenance means the purchasing power capacity profit is earned only if the physical productive capacity of the entity or the resources or funds needed to achieve at the end of the period exceeds the physical productive capacity that was in the beginning okay if you are able to exceed the amount that was in the beginning capacity then you have successfully maintained your capital uh, okay physical capital let's understand this better with an example for example a trader commenced business on 1st january 2001 with rupees 12000 represented by 6000 units of a certain product at rupees 2 okay 6000 into 2 per unit means 12000 capital was there 
During the year 2001, he sold these units at rupees three per unit and had withdrawn rupees six thousand. Okay, what he did? He sold at six thousand, six thousand units at rupees three. Minus what he did? He did drawings of rupees six thousand. Okay, if he did any adjustment, we would have added it. Okay, since your addition is not mentioned, what you have to do? You have to just minus the drawings and all. Sell amount will be added. The opening equity was six thousand. Now twelve thousand. Six thousand into two. Okay, opening equity means twelve thousand. No doubt. Closing equity is what? Eighteen thousand minus six thousand. Okay, this is closing equity. Now, if you are able to maintain, see twelve thousand does not exceed twelve thousand. It is equal. Retained profit is what? Nil. The trader can start in two thousand two by purchasing six thousand units at rupees two once again for selling them at rupees three per unit. The whole process can repeat endlessly if there is no change in the purchasing price. If the purchase price rises, rises, then it will not be successful in maintaining the capital unless its uh, closing capital exceeds its opening. Now, here in this question, it is simplified and not taken into consideration any sort of inflation rate. Now, if we talk about inflation factors and all, let's see what happens. In the previous example, suppose the average price indices at the beginning is is uh, beginning and at the end of the year are one hundred and one twenty. That means, at the year start, okay, you were able to afford some particular thing at rupees hundred. At the end of the year, now to afford that particular same product, you have to pay rupees one twenty. Okay, what does this mean? The average price indices have raised from hundred to one twenty. Now the inflation has added, and now you have to pay one twenty rupees to purchase the same amount of the product, same particular product. Okay. Now, opening equity is what twelve thousand. No worries. Opening equity as closing rate. This means what you have to do this twelve thousand. Okay, into hundred. Divided by one twenty. This means what you have to put it at present value. This means now the amount that you could have bought at rupees two, you have to now pay rupees two point four. When you, at the start you were able to purchase a particular unit at rupees two, now you have to pay rupees two point four for the particular same asset. Okay, same unit. Are you clear with this amount two and two point four? Okay. Now the closing the opening equity at closing rate is fourteen thousand four hundred. Now closing equity as closing price is what eighteen thousand minus six thousand is twelve thousand. Now the closing equity should exceed closing equity should exceed the opening activity uh, uh, opening entity. If it is not exceeding the closing is twelve thousand and the opening is fourteen thousand four hundred. If it is not exceeding this means it has failed to maintain the Capital, okay. This will fail to maintain the capital. Are you clear with this example? Are you able to solve it and relate it? Are you able to catch up with me? Since the inflation was there, the average indices rose. Therefore, the amount of rupees two instead of rupees two, you have to pay two point four per unit. Per unit, okay. So the opening equity at closing price is fourteen thousand four hundred, and closing is twelve thousand. So twelve thousand minus, if twelve thousand would have exceeded this amount, then they have uh, successfully maintained the capital. Please try example number thirteen on your own, and then we'll discuss further. I'm giving you time, opportunity. Please try this once. The same question is there now. The indices is what? Uh, instead of hundred rupees, it has increased to one twenty five. Now. Now you have to pay instead of paying hundred rupees for the same particular amount of the product, you have to pay rupees one twenty at the end of the year. So if you are able to maintain your capital, increase your capital by this twenty five percent, then you are able to successfully maintain your capital. Otherwise not. The formula is same. The method is same. Why we are reading this concept? Because you have to uh, analyze that. Are you able to ca catch up with the inflation rate? Are you going into the losses or are you in a profitable position? You need to figure out this for maintaining your business and growing your business. Need to check out where you can go 
or improve things if you are able to know that if you are able to maintain your capital or not okay so this is similar uh, representation is done in a similar way you can take this that's all for this class now we can turn for the ici questions okay can we move ahead have you tried this example number 13 If you are clear with this example, please write clear in the chat box, and then we'll move ahead. I'm waiting for you. Let me know, please. Okay, since it's a similar question, you can ask me doubt further as well in in the comment section or in the chat box. Okay, I will be there for you. Uh, let's now head towards the question answers of ICAI. This is the pattern that we'll follow in each and every chapter. We'll cover the concepts, we'll see the examples, and then we'll head towards ICI illustrations and the question and answers. Okay? We will cover each and every portion and chapter, and also at the end of this uh, completion, we will also see the MTP RTP. Okay? Even if you are professional, it's worth it. Please read it. Okay? What is an add-on point? If you're not attending any exam, you do not have to. learn this one okay but if you are a student you have to particularly pay attention to the answer writing pattern this is only the difference the concept remains same for both student and professional okay if you want you can skip this question answer part but i would advise that please don't because this is case study based questions and this will really help you um question 1 illustration de recognition versus faithful representation as a 31st march 2002 natasha limited carry trade receivables of rupees 280 crores in the balance sheet at that date natasha limited entered into a factoring agreement what is factoring agreement at times when you transfer your uh, debt collection or all to some agency okay so you have to see if you have transferred all your risk and reward or not if you have transferred all the risk and reward okay for the shortfall you are not liable for any uh, extra income you are not liable you are not uh, uh, or you are not capable of receiving the any inflow so this means you have transferred all the risk and reward if you transfer all the risk and reward then only you can go for de recognition if you are keeping the uh, you if you are still maintaining all the risk and rewards holding all the risk and rewards you are liable for any shortfall or you are able to receive uh, or you are entitled to receive any sort of income extra that has been earned then you cannot re de recognize it okay only when all of the control the risk and reward are transferred then only you can de recognize it from your uh, balance sheet okay see it has entered into a factoring agreement with samantha a financial institution according to which it transferred the trade receivables in exchange for an immediate cash payment of 250 crore it was 280 crore it received 250 crore and transferred all the uh, debtors trade receivables as per the factoring agreement any shortfall between the amount collected and will be reimbursed by natasha this means the risk and reward have not been transferred have not been fully transferred natasha limited is still responsible for any shortfall in the uh, receivables once the trade receivables have been collected any amount or above 250 crore less interest on this amount will be repaid to natasha okay the directors of natasha limited are of the opinion that the trade receivables should be de recognized see tell me your opinion first and then we'll read up further are risk and reward transferred no is the control transferred no then do are you in a position to de recognize it are you in a position will it be correct are the directors correct to remove them from the books of accounts yes or no good no no very good no they cannot de recognize it unless and until all the risk and rewards are transferred okay you are required to explain the appropriate accounting treatment of this transaction in the financial statement for the year ending 31st march 2002 and also evaluate this transaction in the context of conceptual framework let's see see it is also saying that financial instrument and entity shall de recognize only when the contractual rights of the cash flow from the financial asset expire or it transfers the financial asset substantially all the risk and rewards 
of ownership of the finan uh, financial asset to the party. It can derecognize only when no other uh, benefits will be derived and no shortfall will have to be paid. All risk and rewards are substantially transferred. In the case, the contractual rights to the cash flow have not expired. Okay. Other than this, still the Natasha Limited remains liable to make for making good any shortfall. They will have to pay. The risk and rewards have not been transferred. Okay. And this can be uh, known by uh, by the question itself. It also explicitly stated in the agreement that Samantha would be liable to pay Natasha Limited any amount collected more than 250 crores after retaining an amount of interest in amount towards interest. Thus, Natasha Limited retains the potential rewards of full settlement. Therefore, a perusal of the above clearly so shows that substantially all the risk and rewards continue to remain with Natasha. They have not been transferred and hence the trade receivables should continue to appear in the balance sheet of Natasha Limited. Okay. Now, the immediate payment that is consideration as per the factoring agreement of 250 crore by Samantha to uh, Natasha Limited should be regarded as financial liability. See, what you could have done is there is a balance sheet. See. Now, if all the risk and rewards are transferred, you had some trade receivables okay, of excess sum. If all the risk and rewards were transferred, you would have removed this trade receivables and added cash to your balance sheet. But here, since all the risk and rewards are not transferred, what you will do? You will receive a cash amount okay, of 250 crore and add a liability over here equal to this. When it will be finally settled, okay, the trade receivables will be removed and derecognized only when it will be finally settled. Substantially, all risk and rewards will be ended. Okay, contractually, all risk and rewards will be ended. Over here, what you have to do? You have to correspondently record financial liability in the balance sheet side and cash here. Okay, it is 250 crore and 250 crore. Since all risk and rewards are not transferred, you cannot remove this trade receivables from the balance sheet. This is the whole concept. Are you clear? Please let me know. Now, it was also talking about that please comment according to the conceptual framework. So, an asset could be recognized when the control of all or part of it has been removed. Okay. Now, if an entity has apparently transferred an asset but retains the exposure, entity might continue to control the asset and if it controls the asset, then meeting both the above requirements becomes difficult if there is only a part of the disposal of an asset and therefore the retention of some exposure to that asset. It is difficult to faithfully represent the legal form with the substance of retaining the corresponding risk and reward. It is difficult to measure and therefore the amount, the way we are treating above is right as per the conceptual framework. Conceptual framework only tells you different is that all the risk or control should be transferred or partially the control should be transferred. Whereas Indus 109 says that contractually you should not be, uh, you should not be uh, liable to uh, any economic benefits, receive any economic benefits or uh, substantially all the risk and reward should be transferred. These are two lines where, which is said in India's 109 and as per conceptual framework, the um, line that is said is control transfer, either partial or all. Head towards next question. Explain the criteria in the faithful fr uh, conceptual framework for financial reporting for the recognition of an asset and discuss whether there are inconsistencies with criteria in India's 38 in intangible asset. Okay, so you have to learn this and you will understand it better after reading India's 38. Okay, here right now we will just read it and I will give you uh, the conceptual over, uh, overview of it. Okay. Other than that, don't uh, deep dive or don't get confused or don't get stressed out that oh my god I am not able to understand this illustration too or what is going on. Because you will understand this better when India's 38 has been taught to you. Okay. Now let's see. The framework defines an asset as a present economic benefit. Present economic benefit controlled by the entity as a result of past events. This is the line that we have read in the notes as well. Now, as per India's 38, do you do not need to read para, okay? Just keep in mind the India's 38. Intangible asset defines an intangible asset as an identifiable non-monetary asset without physical substance. 
ओके कंट्रोल्ड बाय एन एंटिटी एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ पास्ट इवेंट फ्रॉम विच फ्यूचर इकोनॉमिक बेनिफिट्स विल बी एक्सपेक्टेड टू फ्लो ओके सो दिस इज अमाउंट थिंग्स दैट आर बीन रिकॉर्ड गिवन लेट डाउन वेन सच इनटेंजिबल एसेट शैल बी रिकॉग्नाइज इफ एंड ओनली इफ सच इनटेंजिबल एसेट विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज ओनली एंड ओनली इफ इफ एंड ओनली इफ द प्रोबेबल that the expected future economic benefits that are attributable to the asset will flow to the entity and the cost of the asset can be measured reliably if these two points are clear this is return in end end as 38 these same lines are written it is probable that the uh, benefits will flow and the cost of an uh, asset can be measured reliably if two things are there then you can recognize it otherwise not only you have to learn this okay next question comes is it is notable that uh, that conceptual framework does not prescribe pro probability criteria okay india's 38 says that it should be highly probable whereas in the uh, whereas the framework says that even if there is low probability then also we will recognize recognize asset or liability okay so the recognition criteria and definition of an asset in india's 38 and the framework are different as compared to those outlined in the conceptual framework because they talk about probability differently india's 38 says there should be probability high probability whereas uh, framework says that even if the low probability is there no worries it can be recorded recorded as an asset or liability okay to put in simple words the criteria in india's 38 are more specific but definitely to provide information that is relevant and faithful representation when viewed from the prism of relevance of faithful representation the requirements of india's 38 in the term of recognition appears to be consistent with the conceptual framework okay if we talk about the uh, recording recognition criteria it is quite same but the probability concept is different in both these uh, india's 38 and the framework next comes illustration 3 the directors of hind limited are particular about the usefulness of the financial statement they have opined that although india's implement a fair value model india's are failing to reflect the usefulness of the financial statements as they do not reflect the financial value of the entity okay they are saying that fair value is not uh, equally useful because they are not reflecting the financial value of the entity discuss the views of the directors as regarded the use of fair value in india's you know there is a mixed approach okay the indians ask for fair value as and when required other than that you can also record at historical values and current values okay and the fact that the indians does not do not reflect the financial value of an entity making special reference to relevant indians and the conceptual framework usage of fair, fair value in indians treatment under indians that statement of directors regarding indians implementing a fair value model is not entirely accurate okay although it should not entirely uh, reflect the indians okay wherever it is required fair value then only they have to record at fair value otherwise mixed approach is followed although indians do use fair value it is not completely a fair value system see this is important it is not a complete fair value system indians are often based on business model of the entity and on the expectations of realizing the asset liability related cash flow through operations and transfers it is notable that what is preferred is a mixed me mixed measurement system okay so when when you have to do fair valuation as per indians 113 it guides you how to measure where a specific standard requires when to do it specific indians ask that when an particular asset or liability needs to be fair valued but how to fair take it at fair valuation it is mentioned in indias 113 with some items being measured at fair value while others measured at historical cost as indias 113 defines fair value as the price would be received you can read this it is given an explanation of the both things it is not a co complete fair value system first thing secondly mixed measurement system is uh, applied or accepted by the indians okay for examples are given you do not need to learn them but you can read them for practical approach and you will get it better when you read this particular india 16 38 40 and 109 because specific indians ask you 
when a particular fair valuation should be done but how to do it is given in index 113 okay to provide financial information about the reporting entity which would be useful not intended to show the value of the entity index never says that we will be financially valuing the entity because we do not well uh, record on the liquidation basis instead we go on going concern basis okay so it does not value the entity instead Uh, shows how the reporting entity will be uh, showing its most relevant and financial e uh, faithfully representable values okay which uh, next illustration number 4 everest limited a listed company having investment in various subsidiaries it is an in its annual financial statement for the year ending 31st march 2002 as well as 31st march 2003 Everest Limited classified Kanchan Janga Limited as a subsidiary held for sale. Okay, Everest is holding listed company. It has described and recorded as held for sale, and presented it as discontinued operation. Okay, so there is separate standard available which describes the definitions for when a particular non-current asset can be uh, recorded as held for sale. and when can it be presented as discontinued operation okay on november 1 the shareholders had authorized the management to sell all of its holding in kanchanjunga limited within a year okay they had intentions to do it within a year in the year 31st march 2002 the management made a public announcement also of its intention to sell the investments okay but not actively tried to sell they have not taken any sort of steps and have no sh- not shown their intentions actively by trying any step uh, they have not taken any step to sell it okay they have not actively tried to sell it the subsidiary as it was still operational within the average group also what they have done certain organizational changes have been done means they are still aiming at reviving it and continuing it instead of selling it if your intentions are to sell it then you can record it as non current asset held for sale and discontinued operations only and only when you are applying you are actively taking part in selling it you have intentions to sell it within a year okay we'll see it further thereby resulting in additional activities being transferred to kanchanjunga limited additionally during the year ended 31st march 2003 there had been draft agreements and some correspondence with investment bankers there have been agreements with the banks which showed in principle only that kanchanjunga was still for sale discuss whether the classification of kanchanjunga limited as held for sale and its presentation as discontinued operation is appropriate whether it is appropriate by referring to the principles of relevant indices and evaluating the t- treatment in the concept context in the context of the conceptual framework for financial reporting solution c uh, it should be recorded as per indices 105 it should be recorded as non current held for sale and discontinued operations only and only when disposal group can be defined as a group is given weight when particularly strictly as far as the application of the held for sale criteria are concerned what are those criteria the criteria are that the sale is highly probable the sale is highly probable that means appropriate level of management is committed the same is given in indias 105 this criteria is where written in days 105 why it is given over here there is a question over here to make you more understand the framework and the difference between standard okay framework says that a level of management for example a clerk comes okay or a peon comes and says let's sell this building okay will it happen no okay the appropriate level of management means the management or the person or the particular uh, person or a group of person who are entitled to take decisions are committed that yes they will be selling such particular uh, whatever the asset is so they should be committed active actions and programs are being taken uh, with the buyers and complete plan has been initiated the asset must be actively marketed okay the selling should be intentional and should be rigorously taken out the sale should be expected to qualify for recognition as completed sale within a year within one year 
ओके इवन इन द कंचनजंगा केस ओके द सब्सिडरी वॉज बींग री ऑर्गेनाइज ओके ऑर्गेनाइजेशन चेंजेस वर डन इवन आफ्टर वन ईयर दे वर ओनली टॉकिंग टू बैंकर्स इन ए ड्राफ्ट अग्रीमेंट देर वॉज नो स्पेसिफिक स्टेप्स टेकन टू सेल सच पर्टिकुलर एसेट ओके इट इज अनलाइकली दैट सिग्निफिकेंट चेंजेस टू द प्लान विल मेक विल बी मेड और दैट द प्लान विल बी विड्रॉन ओके इट इज वेरी अनलाइकली so since it is not over here the case therefore what you will see you will see that based on the conclusion it should not be classified by everest limited as subsidiary held for sale instead and discontinued for operation should also not be taken because they are still working on it but if there is no cash inflow then they can record it okay you can read this answer this is more relevant this will be more understandable when you read india's 105 so please don't get stressed out or confused right now this is just a glimpse we you when you will revise this chapter number 1 or framework after reading all the indians you will understand it far better 100 times better okay next comes test your knowledge the director of jayant limited has received the following email from its majority shareholder director of jayant limited management uh, i recently had read an article published in the financial press about the mixed measurement approach that is used by lot of companies i hope jayant limited does not follow such an approach because mixed seems to be to imply inconsistent i believe that consistency is of paramount importance and hence feel it better feel it would be better to measure everything in a uniform manner okay now as you know that india is prescribes and ask you and permits you that you can take different different approaches for different nature of assets different class of assets okay you can do it you can value it at fair value okay you can value some other assets at historical current other other values can be used it applies mixed approach it applies mixed approach so as per india's mix approach is permitted it if anybody or any shareholder is asking you that this is absurd and it is confusing that you are using mixed approach this is poor judgment poor uh, poor uh, you will say um, uh, statement and it is not at all inconsistent if you are applying mixed approach it is not at all inconsistent what is a take away point for practical knowledge for the professionals that you can apply mixed approach for different different class of uh, assets okay what is a take away that you can apply a mixed approach it is not necessary that if you have fair value one particular asset then you have to fair value it uh, then you have to then you uh, you have to value all the assets at fair value all the liabilities at uh, liabilities at fair value got it there is a mixed approach and if you are applying mixed approach it is consistent with indias uniform manner it would be appreciated if you could for, uh, provide further information at the next agm on measurement basis covering that approach is taken by jayant limited and why and the potential effects or uh, such an approach has on the investors trying to analyze the financial statement prepare notes to the directors of jayant limited to discuss the issue raised in the shareholders email with reference to the conceptual framework if you read the answer if you are uh, trying if you are planning to attempt ici questions and answers ici exams then you have to learn it as well okay the the way you will learn it the way the higher you replicate it the more you make uh, time and uh, the way the uh, the higher you make efforts in observing the pattern of answering the questions you will be in a better position to score marks how you can score higher marks by attempting and by making efforts to observe the pattern in which it is being um, said out in the ici question and answers okay you have to thoroughly go throughout each and every question and the answer pattern you have to revise it again and again and appear for the test that i take i personally evaluate each and every test that has been appeared by each and every student okay uh if you have practical approach then it's uh, this it's all about this chapter number 1 about the framework i hope you've got an overview of it and you have understood this okay you uh, it's like you have to read this and learn it if you are aiming for exam purpose otherwise just read it and leave it 
okay i hope i brought a conceptual frame uh, uh, conceptual clarity for the framework understanding okay i have helped you for all the video lectures and pdf notes you can definitely download an app uh, download our app it is there in the description box okay you can find the link from there it is also applicable for the ios you have to follow the same link but while doing the while logging in via ios system you have to use a organization code which is hsggo and use your registered number okay you can even access the same course at your web portals there are offers going on coupon discounts are available please apply them before purchasing it okay even in case of any doubt related to concept or the course or any other query please uh, let me know in the comment section or you can also dm me on instagram or what you can do is you can download the app and chat over there in person with me okay this is swati gupta signing off take care be safe stay tuned see you in the next chapter tan tan be learning